What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekoWatt video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to put together an awesome gaming PC for 1440p and 4K gaming. With GPU prices at rock bottom, there hasn't been a better time to build a gaming PC in a long while. I'll be running you through all the parts in this video, how to go ahead and put the system together, and looking at the performance later on. Let's do this. The NZXT H7 lineup of cases truly does provide a chassis for everyone, with the H7, H7 Flow and H7 Elite each focusing on different areas of the market. Whether it's RGB and tempered glass you're after, or full out airflow, NZXT have you covered. And to show you what they're made of, we've put together a build in each of these brand new cases. Learn about the full range at the links in the description below. As with all of our gaming PC builds, we're going to start off with what I like to call our core components. These comprise of our motherboard, CPU, memory, and SSD. These are parts which every system needs to function and that we can install all in one go before dealing with the case choice in our build and making things that bit more complicated. Now, as you'll be able to tell here, I've gone for an Intel platform for this system. Intel's Core i7-12-7KF is an awesome choice. I recently picked this up on Prime Day for an absolutely cracking deal, helping to keep prices nice and cheap. But spoiler alert, sales are everywhere right now for PC hardware. I'll be coupling this up with the Asus ROG Strix Z690A gaming Wi-Fi. Now, some of you may be thinking, James, Z690 makes sense, but isn't it very expensive? In short, no, this right here is Asus's more entry-level Z690 option that combines the great feature set of the high-end chipset with pricing you might more typically expect to see on budget motherboards. It looks absolutely incredible though. All these accents of white and light gray and silver are gonna fit perfectly with our build's color scheme and the whole thing is just an absolute delight. Asus have been killing the game recently with so many great new products. We've reviewed this motherboard on our website along with a host of other goodies that Asus have released recently. Into the motherboard, I'll also be installing this 32GB RAM kit from Corsair. This is their Vengeance RGB RT. Now, 32 gigs of RAM is the perfect amount to pick up in 2022. More and more games are recommending higher memory allocations nowadays, especially given how powerful CPUs and GPUs have got, and all the extra bandwidth that they need to actually process properly. This is a 3600MHz kit, which is going to be helpful, though anything above 3000 for an Intel setup is going to be completely fine. Finally, to wrap things up on the motherboard front, I've got our storage to install, the best Gen 4 NVMe drive you can buy right now. We've reviewed the Seagate Firecooler 530 and been nothing short of impressed. Seven gigabytes per second on the read and the write is incredible and will work super well in our system. Of course, with this motherboard having built in heat sinks and heat spreaders. No! Oh no, that's a disaster! Just casually dropping a $200 SSD on the floor. With built-in heat sinks and heat spreaders, where was I on our motherboard? We, of course, don't need to buy the more expensive heat sink version, as we can use the ones that are already included. Aesthetically as well, it should look just that little bit better. Grab yourself a smaller than normal screwdriver, otherwise known on the channel as a TD tiny screwdriver for this stage of the process, then slide your drive into place. There we go, pop it in, push it down, and then the tallest assembly will hold it into place. Add your heat spreader back on for good measure, and that will obviously keep the drive cool and make sure it also isn't likely to go anywhere. With all of the stages on the motherboard now complete, we can go ahead and move the finished motherboard assembly over into the case for this system. Don't worry, we'll come back to look at the GPU and potential future GPU options for this build a little bit later. I've got to admit, this is quite a piece heavier than I thought it was going to be. Oh, I need some sort of step to get into this. There we go. Oh, yes. This is the brand new Lian Li Langcool 3. Now, this case looks very, very premium, very nice on the outset, but the number of features is quite possibly endless. Let me show you. First of all, the PSU shield is actually just a door that opens. And then of course, we can open the tempered glass side panel. Along the bottom here, you've got like fan mounting options. You've got a 140 mil in the rear. You've got loads of room at the top. You've got three 140s at the front, a solid IO that also includes the latest USB-C standard. There's an integrated 
integrated and included RGB control hub. If we spin the case around to the back, which very heavy this case, you can see here we've got then another pull down PSU shield, another swing door tempered glass side panel, behind which you'll find SSD mounts, hard drive mounts, and these nice cable covers, which are actually on doors, which we can swing open like so. The whole thing is just a bit crackers. And I really, really like what Lee and Lee have done here. The thing feels heavy because it's very premium and it is, of course, very heavy. I'm going to take off the side panels first of all, lay the case down flat and install the motherboard. And I'm hoping that the silver and white aesthetic will all go ahead and tie in very nicely. At least that's the plan. What we're then able to move on to do is to install the CPU cooler. It makes sense to do this now before the GPU and the power supply are in, as we can not only make sure our positioning is right, but of course have all the cables and wiring ready to go for a little bit later. This is Corsair's H150i Elite Capellix in, of course, white. Now this comes included with three RGB fans, a fully white radiator and white tubing, making it the perfect match for our build today and of course our white Lankle 3 PC case. Now one dilemma and kind of problem that we do have is that typically I'd pop this at the front. I wouldn't even think twice about it, but Lee and Lee kindly include three 140mm fans at the front, meaning a 420mm radiator would fit and this one won't unless we ditch those fans. With this in mind, I think I might instead go ahead and try and install the radiator at the top. There's plenty of room, it will give us some exhaust airflow as well, helping to keep that pressure the right balance, and still deliver fantastic temperatures. These three 140mm fans are going to bring in so much airflow that I'm not concerned at all about running this thing in exhaust. The only thing I am concerned about is how you go about removing this top panel. I think there may be a singular thumb screw. Oh, Lee and Lee, you're making my life easy. This is one really cool, really well designed case. I'm going to pop the exhaust fans on the bottom of the radiator, then screw the whole radiator and fan assembly into the very top of the chassis. Add the back plate onto the motherboard and then install the CPU water block, securing it in place with these four thumb screws, which will then fasten down, of course, with a screwdriver. The Corsair logo on the water block can also be changed and moved. So if it's the wrong orientation for you out of the box, make sure you get that changed so your system's looking nice and shiny. Oh yes, that is looking really sick. And we can next move on to the GPU, the Asus Tough RTX 3080. Now, in an ideal world, I might have preferred an all white card for this build, but I'm hoping the silvery tones of the Tough GPUs will match just as well. This build is also, of course, primed for next gen releases, something like an RTX 4070 or 4080, if that's what it's called. For clarification, I've got no idea at the moment. With PCI Gen 5 on this motherboard and the latest Intel 12th Gen CPUs, it's pretty future proofed and will make a great basis. Especially if you've already got a solid graphics card, like a 2060 or 2070, this could be an awesome build to put together now where you save up some money for those next gen cards. Or heck, even bag a great deal on the current 30 series. It's likely next gen GPUs will sell out when they first launch, so that's something to bear in mind. If you're looking to big up a new GPU, realistically, you're probably going to be waiting until the start of next year. So January, February 2023. If we spin the case around like so, we can go ahead and unbox our Tough 3080 GPU and go ahead and get this installed into place. With 10 gigabytes of video memory, this is going to be perfect for playing the latest titles and I think it's going to look pretty good in our system today. Now, PCI slot wise, I think we need to remove the second and the third slots before going ahead and slotting the GPU into place. We are, of course, going to give it power with our next component, Corsair's CX750F. This unit has of course got 750 watts of power, plus it's fully modular, meaning you only plug in the cables you actually need to. As if that wasn't enough, the unit is actually white, which is going to look great in our build, and even though the power supply is hidden away behind a nice PSU shield, you do get some white included cables. Now, I think I'm going to pop in some custom braided extensions for this system, but the ones at the top for the CPU can stick with our normal PSU cables, helping to keep cost down, and of course our aesthetic still looking fantastic. Let's go ahead and put all these cables into the power supply, screw it into the back of the case, and plug up our custom easy DIY fab cable extensions to finish the aesthetic of the build off nicely. And once we've done that, we can boot the thing up for the first time, see just how well it performs, but first, how good it looks in an epic eco op montage. I'll see you in a second, but first, roll that montage! <laughs> Sleep 
Christian. Now that we've seen how good the PC looks, how to put it together, and of course, all the parts involved, it's time to see just how well those parts perform in our gaming benchmark section. On your screen now is a summary of all the results we gathered, all the frame rates from all of the titles we tested on this system. We test a huge array of games with the latest titles to make sure you guys can be completely sure of what performance to expect. And I'll be diving in title by title to a few of our focus games in that little bit more detail. The first of those games is Battlefield 2042. At 4K high settings, we pulled in over 80 frames per second, 84 to be precise. As you can see from the FPS graph in the top left corner, frame rates were consistent and didn't deviate all too much. We also tested out COD Vanguard. Here at 4K high settings, we once again surpassed that all important 80 frames mark, kind of coincidentally getting exactly the same frame rate. The average was the same, but the 90 and 99th percentiles did differ with 79 and 76, representing those 10% and 1% lows. The positive news continued through with Forza Horizon 5. Here at 4K Ultra settings tested in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode, we pulled in just shy of 90 frames per second on average. For a racing game, anything above 80 frames is absolutely fine. 60 really is okay for a game like FH5, so 88 was an awesome result. Moving on to Apex Legends, Next up, here at 4K high settings, we achieved over 100 FPS, 123 frames per second to be precise. 90 and 99th percentile results were strong too, with the game looking really consistent on the frame rate from 4K high settings to get these frame rates is a bit crackers. We also tested out Fortnite at 1080p competitive settings. Next up, here we achieved over 200 frames per second on average, 237 to be precise. The frame rate basically never dropped below 290 and practically never dropped below 160 with strong 90 and 99th percentiles too. The last game on our list to look at today is a bit of COD Warzone here at 4K high settings. We got some really impressive results. 97 frames per second to nearly 100 FPS on average in this classic COD title with strong 90 and 99th percentiles too. Whether it's 1080p, 1440p or 4K gaming you're after, this system's got it covered with some incredible frame rates and some great settings for an all awesome gaming experience.